I'm slowly but surely working on some suggestion boxes for the office. I'm prototyping first in this flame box elder, and then building the final in this beautiful spalted beach with purple heart in the front frame. This has been a pretty fun project, and I might do a build video on it eventually. There's about 120 gigabytes of footage so far. But there's one part that I thought deserved its own special segment because it was a little tricky to figure out, and I couldn't find any instructions online, at least not using the search terms that I used. And that is how to get this type of lock to work on this type of box. Now I'm referring to, uh, this might be referred to as a cabinet and drawer lock. Uh, you might also see it as an RV lock. Uh, this one was called a cam lock, so, uh, or, or a mailbox lock is another term that you often see. The reason this was, uh, it was not entirely intuitive is because these types of locks are really intended to prevent a door from opening that way. It's not intended to stop movement that way, but that's how I want to use it. It goes on to the frame like this and it prevents the door from, from opening. So I had to figure out how to customize that to work with this type of frame. And another option would have been just to use a regular hasp. And that would wrap around the side right here and you could put a padlock in it. But I wanted to do it this way. I think it just looks a little bit cleaner when the door is closed. There isn't a padlock dangling there that might bang on the wood and dent it over time. And I just kind of wanted to figure out how to do it. But, but uh, this is the route I decided to take. And I'm just going to go over uh, briefly how, how to do the measurements for this. Because again, this is a prototype box here. I'm using this so that I can make my mistakes in this piece and not in the final pieces. And this one is less than perfect. So I'm going to uh, make sure that I get that corrected before moving on to the next one. And I'll talk over the process that I would have used if I had to do this again. When I say that this one is less than perfect, I'm referring to this little bit of play that's in the door when the lock is secured. People are going to drop papers into the top, and I don't want that little gap to be enough for a paper to pop out of the corner, because that would kind of make it a less than anonymous suggestion box. So uh, I want to fix that so that the, the, uh, the lock side has the same tight tolerance as the hinge side, which closes very closely to the box frame. And another thing that I'll do to mitigate the, that risk is to put a strip along the bottom of the face frame so that there's a bit of a baffle there. So even if something did happen to land right in that corner, it would still be hitting a part of the frame and not go into a gap. Well, the reason for the gap is that there's a... First of all, I cut the latch a little bit wrong on the, on the hook here. And also, there's a little bit of play inside that cylinder lock itself that I didn't account for. Uh, I think I can close this up on the next version, but again, that's the whole point of doing a prototype piece, is that you can make your mistakes here and apply the lessons learned to the final. Now, another option for locking this thing is uh, if the frame was a little bit wider in the front, you could actually notch out inside the frame so that this, this hook would go inside of the face frame itself and put a metal tab on the bottom for it to hook into. But I couldn't do it that way because of the width of this lock, or the depth, and the width of the frame. The front of it is recessed so that the, uh, you know, the actual pitcher, the glass front, the pitcher, and the plywood backer can go in here. Uh, because of the, the location of this, I would have had to actually cut into the area where the plywood is and the pitcher is going to go, so that wouldn't be ideal. So I added an extra piece of metal instead. That metal was not supplied with the mailbox lock kit. I went poking through my hardware bins looking for an adequate solution and came across these mirror holders. These are just designed for holding a mirror on the wall. They get kind of a Z shape. And that was just the right thing to go on this face frame. I have that recessed into the, the frame so it sits flush and that way it doesn't interfere with the door closing all the way. And it's just the right, uh, right space there for this hook to come around and hold on to it. Let's take a closer look at how to get the right measurements for this. The two measurements that you really need to get right here are where to drill the hole for the cylinder and also where to cut this latch so that you have a hook that's not going to be too far out or too far in. And mine just happens to fall visually centered on this on the overall frame. That was just a coincidence, but if it was back any farther it would have been inconvenient to use because this is going to be mounted against the wall. It's just a tiny space to get your fingers in to unlock it. And if it went any farther forwards, it was going to stick out beyond the front of the box and prevent the door from closing all the way. Now, first we're going to figure out where the cylinder hole needs to be drilled. 
All you need to do that is a piece of scrap wood and set it up as if it were going to be the side of the box. And then you take one of your, your uh, mirror holders and align it the way it would be on the door if the door was closing. And then just imagine that following through onto this piece of wood. And that's what it would look like on the inside once that door closes. So you got it lined up like it is right there. And now you're going to make a mark on here, not on this side, but on that side of the wall. Just try to you know, guess, eyeball it, where that thing would line up. And what this mark is going to tell you is when the hook closes, where does it need to fall to keep that door tight? If you're over this way, that's going to give you a lot of slop in that door. But you want, to, want this to be relatively tight up against that mirror hanger. You also don't want it to stick out too far beyond the end of the box. Uh, so now that you have that line telling you where the inside wall of this is, then you can grab one of the, the latches that you're going to use. And there are different options. Uh, usually the, the, the kit will come with different styles of latches so that you can pick the right one based on your door. I'm probably going to use these shorter ones. So you get that lined up on there and figure out where the center of this opening is. And that's going to be where you need to drill out for your cylinder. And that's also going to let you figure out how you're going to need to cut this piece of metal to latch properly onto the mirror hanger. And I'm going to use a fine point sharpie. You got your line already on there and the center point where you're going to drill for the cylinder. I'll slide this up to the front edge. You don't want to go beyond it because then you'll have to grind some off. Go right up to the front edge there. And I will continue that line about halfway up. Come over, down, and that's the area you're going to want to cut out to make the hook. And because this one is a little bit square on the end, I don't want that corner hitting first as it's closing. So I'm also going to put a radius on that front edge. So you're going to remove that and all of that. And that's going to give you the right size hook to latch onto that mirror hanger. And one thing to keep in mind, again, because there's a little bit of, of play in that lock, uh, you don't want to grind all the way up to the end of your, your uh, cutout area here at first. Stay back a little bit and then just sneak up on it little by little until you get just the right fit. And then you can use this one as a pattern for cutting the rest of your locks if you have to do more than one. Well, it took me two more tries to get it right, but I finally got it right. So now I have a template that I can use for cutting the other latches. One of the last gotchas is that the cylinder has two flat sides, and that is intended to match up with a corresponding hole in a mailbox or something similar, and that prevents the cylinder from rotating inside the hole when the key is turned. So to prevent that from happening, you just got to glue something onto the sides to fill that space. For now, I just have a couple pieces of a popsicle stick broken off in there to, to slow down the rotation but I will probably slice the cheeks off of a three quarter of an inch dowel and glue it onto the sides for the finished version just to have a more permanent solution. And now let's close this up just so you can see the spacing as it's coming down. And right about there, there is enough room on either side so that it's not gonna get stuck even if the door is not perfectly closed. And there we got positive contact in the front and it doesn't take much pressure to get it to close all the way. And when I take the key out, there's not going to be any kind of, uh, of movement on that door, yet it's not too tight that somebody would have trouble turning the key. So I think that worked out just right. And hopefully this is everything you need to know to be able to modify a mailbox lock to use on a wooden box. And if I find a manufacturer who makes these things with the hook already built in, that would be very convenient. I will post it down in the description or in the comments. Likewise, if you know of something, uh, feel free to put it in the comments as well so the rest of us can benefit from it. Thanks for watching and have a great day.